I'm Christy. Today I want to talk to you about self-contained versus mainstream. One of the biggest hurdles during the school years is what kind of classroom is the best fit for your loved one. Both self-contained and mainstream classes have their pros and cons. Let's take a look. Self-contained classes are just that. They're classrooms that focus specifically on kids with special needs. In our area, functional ability level determines class placement, at least roughly. While I'm sure I won't list every time of every type of class our district offers, this gives you an idea of how it works in our area. In descending order from highest function to lowest. Gate, gifted and talented education. These classes are usually a period or two a week where the students are pulled out of their general education or mainstream class and given more challenging work. The exact way it works varies from school to school. Each student qualifies for this class by passing specific tests. Mainstream. Mainstream classrooms are general education classes. This is the kind of class you think of when you think of a kid going to school. Resource classes are another pullout class. Typically students spend one or two periods a day or a week in a resource classroom for extra help in the subjects they most struggle with. When they're not in the resource class, they're in a typical or mainstream classroom. SLD or severe learning disabilities is a classroom where kids still focus on learning academics, but many times behind their peers. Obviously, the older the kids get, the larger that gap can become. LIF, or life skills, is a program that I describe as not being on the academic track. As the name implies, this class focuses more on functional life skills than academics. Yes, they still learn basic academics, reading, math, etc. But as the kids age, the focus becomes more about being able to function as independently as possible in the world. So, they focus on things like learning to find things in the store, understanding how much things cost and how to pay for things, and how to safely navigate between locations as independently as possible. FLS, or functional life skills, teaches students who function below the life skills level. These students typically need significant assistance in most areas of functioning to get through their day. They don't usually spend a lot of time on academics. Teaching these students how to do things for themselves is a huge accomplishment for most of these students. Autism classrooms run the gamut of the autism spectrum, and some schools have multiple autism classrooms where they divide the students up by ability level, at least theoretically. In these classes, students' individual needs are met while they learn and grow to reach their fullest potential. However, an autism diagnosis does not guarantee a self-contained classroom placement. Students capable of succeeding in a mainstream classroom are placed there. Choosing the best placement for your loved one can be tricky. Sometimes it can be incredibly frustrating if you don't agree with where your district wants to place your student or your loved one. Just like all things in life, each type of class has its own pros and cons. Mainstream classrooms are beneficial because they allow a student to feel normal. They learn at a typical speed and level and can keep up with their peers academically. Sometimes though, students struggle to keep up academically or are teased or bullied by other students. Either of these issues can become significant and lead to struggles for your loved one. By contrast, self-contained classes are beneficial for a number of reasons. First, they typically are smaller class sizes, they have the same teacher for the whole day except for the teacher's prep period, and they usually have at least one aide in the class at all time. Students learn how the teacher runs the class, and the teacher learns how to work with each student individually to help them best reach their fullest potential. Also, many times these classes are able to focus on a smaller section of the special needs spectrum. When students function at a similar level or face similar issues, it's easier to modify place plans to teach them so that everyone can reach their fullest potential. The downside is that being in a separate class all day makes socializing with typical peers more difficult. While this means less risk of bullying or teasing, it also prevents them from learning positive, socially acceptable behaviors from their peers. Now, so how do you decide on the best option? Sometimes you have no choice because self-contained classes are limited or unavailable. In our district, many times the choice of which self-contained class is in the hands of administrators. It can be incredibly difficult to change their minds if they disagree with you or if you disagree with their choice. Some people believe that mainstreaming is always the best op alternative. Each student deserves a comparable education thanks to FAPE, free appropriate public education. And this means everyone should be in a mainstream classroom. Now, I understand their perspective, and I don't necessarily disagree. However, I've seen too many instances where mainstreaming was detrimental to the student. I'm a firm believer in mainstreaming students who are able to keep up academically and function well socially. 
I know students with special needs who thrive in mainstream classrooms. I also know students forced to mainstream who are completely incapable of functioning at that level or completing the work required of them. Here's my bottom line. If a student can keep up academically and socially, then they need to be in a mainstream classroom. If they struggle, then they require other accommodations or, or other options. But if a student is unable to keep up with their peers, they should be placed in a self-contained classroom. There are many instances where a student simply does not function near enough to their peers for them to successfully participate in a mainstream classroom. If they don't understand the material being presented, they're likely to become frustrated, which can lead to behavior issues. Or the student tunes out and learns that they don't have to pay attention in class. This teaches them that they don't have to learn new things while they're at school. Now that just sounds like a bad precedent to set to me. Now regardless of your decision or where your loved one is placed, know that some will support your decision while others will disagree with you. Each family must decide for themselves. And that leads me to my question for this week. How did you handle the school years for your loved one? I'd love to hear your thoughts. You can leave me a comment below or you can leave me a comment over on the blog. That's at www.havenofhopeforme.com. This originally posted in December of 2021. If you prefer, you can always email me at Christy, C-H-R-I-S-T-Y, at havenofhopeforme.com. I'm grateful for the support I received in the choices I made for AJ so that I can continue to say that life is good and there is never a dull moment.